Hello, you two. Well, I thought I'd make a video about this net top here. <clears throat> I haven't... The last... I think the re last real video I made of this was either in a video about my server setup, or... Well, the last... I, I guess the last real video I made of it was uh, when I had a studio set up over here by this piano, which was... I don't know, maybe a year ago? Yeah, about a year ago, actually. So if you look back a year, you'll probably find videos of me with making an Ubuntu Studio setup with that net top. Uh, this net top has uh, changed hands quite a bit. It was mine. I bought it in like November of 2009, I think. November, December of 2009. <clears throat> in kind of as a compulsive buy, I was just like, hmm, net top, low power, phone, shut up, phone. It was about. I don't know, maybe, uh, it was about uh, $99 at the time. Yeah, I looked back at Newegg recently, and it was $99 for this whole thing, which, uh, when I got it, it was an Atom 330 motherboard. So it had an Atom 330 processor on it, and that was dual-core hyper-threaded. And it was quite, a, it was, qu it performed quite well, actually. I ended up putting, I think, one or two, two gigs of RAM in it, I think, actually. Yeah, it had, uh, like, uh, one slot, one or two slots, and I think it had one slot, the 330 board did. So I stuck a two gig stick of Kingston on there. PC5300, I believe. Maybe even PC4200, I can't remember. <clears throat> but either way, uh, yeah, I used that, I used it in that configuration for a while. I had a 400 gig, 400 gigabyte Western Digital hard drive in there. Which unfortunately was a version of the Caviar drive that, uh, I don't know, for some reason this 400 gigabyte models, they were notorious for failing, but they didn't fail for me quite that fast. I took the hard drive into work one day, and all of a sudden, uh, I just pulled up, I pulled up the smart monitor for fun just to see how the drive was doing, and there were bad sectors all over it. Oh, that was fun. So eventually after that, I ended up putting an 80 gigabyte refurbished Hitachi drive that came in my Dell C521 and that the drive sound as uh, my friend Sean describes it, it sounds like an old Maxter drive, it's very very loud seeking, clickety clackety clackety clickety chunk of a chunk sort of uh, <laughs> seeking but this net top has changed hands, it was mine first then, I, then uh, my unfortunately my late friend Sandra had it while I was on Christmas vacation and she used it as a, I think she just played around with it. She had it. She used it as a server for a while. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, she's no longer with us. She died of a stroke uh, at near the end of October last year. And if you guys want me to explain that, I will. Even though it's a little hard to talk about. If you want me to, I will. But whatever. Anyhow, she had it for a while. Then it came back to me later on in that year. That was my freshman year of college. And. Uh, then it stayed kind of in this particular spot the whole time. What I used it for back then was a uh, an access point. I had it sitting over here being an internet access point for my laptop over there by the bed. Now, I've revised that setup since then. And instead of using a computer to do that, I have DDWRT on a, uh, on a Linksys router here, a WRT54GS. With speed booster, whoa! I put DDWRT on. I put DDWRT on here, and it's a bridge repeater now. So it uh, it it acts as a client bridge, and it also repeats that Wi-Fi signal back out over throughout the room. So this netbook, this netbook can use it. This netbook can use it. Blah. Nettop can use it. Uh, this the Sound Studio computer, the AV Studio computer can use it, and my laptop over by the bed can use it. So it's. It's it's not the fastest connection in the world. Powerline networking would probably be more safe, but powerline networking is slow compared to Wi-Fi bridging. So yeah. Anyhow, that's what the net top was originally for. Then eventually, I decided to make it into a studio setup, which was over there for a while, where I transferred reel to reel and vinyl and tape with that, and it worked quite well. Uh, then it found its way into my friend Sean's hands. If you want to see his YouTube page, it's Sansui350A. <clears throat> uh, 
then he used it as a uh, as a server for a while, and uh, <laughs> unwittingly, I kind of uh, introduced him to how efficient these atom chips can be. I mean, they're very very slow at number crunching things, like for example, folding at home or Boink or uh, SQL database. Heavy SQL database. I mean, you can do basic SQL crap on these things, and they'll they'll do just fine. <clears throat> And even things like compiling are a little bit slower on these, but still, despite the fact that they're not the best at number crunching, they are still extremely fa fast and efficient processors for what they are. Now, this one I used as a server for a while, but I've uh, since uh, the electric bills have started to go up, I've had to uh, kind of improvise the setup a little bit. I've moved every. I used to have two servers. This used this nettop used to serve as my game servers and teams. This this thing used to host TeamSpeak server games servers for games like Minecraft and Urban Terror <clears throat> and even Counter Strike Source at one point, and it ran those beautifully without a problem. Uh, although, because like uh, before, I actually the computer that was that's over here sitting here, uh, I ran a Counter Strike server on the uh, that Pentium Four box, and the lerp of the server kind of uh, bounced to a thousand every now and then because the processor couldn't handle it. And this definitely handled it a lot better. I'll tell you that. It handles Urban Terror, no problem. It handles Minecraft absolutely beautifully if you put enough RAM in the machine. I have three gigs of RAM in this thing. It had four gigs when it was in service as a server. And that is the same with the ser current server I have downstairs now, which was my file server, which was sitting over there as well. But that file server has been repurposed to both a file server and my... It's my everything server now, the other uh, Atom motherboard that I have. But this particular one uh, fell in the Sean's hands. Then I ended up buying it back from him because I missed my little net top. We affectionately call it the derp top <laughs> because, I mean, the case of it is pretty bad. I actually, the, so many uh, of the plastic uh, tabs broke off that I actually had the uh, packing tape the bottom of it on, which is like this part of the case is great. The metal is nice. This part of the case, the plastic is absolute shit. Case in point. Uh, but the hardware inside of it's pretty damn good. So we'll have a look at it, shall we? Here you can see I have an extremely large IBM uh, Model M keyboard cord plugged into the PS keyboard PS2 port. It actually has a real PS2 controller with the two ports instead of the modern one where you can uh, where it has both colors on one PS2 port, which is emulated crap. It has a Sierra port, a real Sierra port, a parallel port for printers. It has four USB ports on the back. One uh, has onboard LAN, of course. Every computer needs to have onboard LAN. I don't. I forget if it's gigabit or not. It probably is, though, considering how new the board is. Also has onboard audio, which is surprisingly good, actually. The onboard audio on this Foxconn board is pretty damn good. I believe it's real tech. Uh, and this board was upgraded, by the way. That's one thing I forgot to mention. The board in this thing was upgraded by Sean when he had this net top. It was a... Uh, originally had an Adam 330 board. That board is now in the hands of uh, our mutual friend Tyler. <clears throat> for him to play around with. And this now has a... a uh, I actually know the model number of the motherboard. It's in, it is a Foxconn D51S, if you want to look that up in Google. It'll tell you uh, the attributes and all the stuff about the motherboard that you need to know. But it has an Atom D510 processor on it, which is considerably better than the Atom 330. It's, it's, it's pretty on par with the uh, processor that's in the Atom board of, of my, main, of my uh, main server, which is an Atom D525, I think. Yeah, it's pretty on par with that. It's not much slower, but it's not, you know, it's very much a lot better than the... Uh, <clears throat> Adam 330, but continuing with the ports, you can see those, those flashing lights down there. That is the Wi-Fi card I have in this machine, so that I don't have to, you know, lay cables everywhere. As you can see, I need to re-glue this antenna, because it's kind of, you know, hanging there. <clears throat> um, but what the card that's in there is a D-Link DWL320, I believe. I can't remember. If, I don't, don't quote me on that. I can't remember if the model number is exactly right. We'll find out when we look in Device Manager later. But uh, that D-Link card's been one of the best Wi-Fi cards I've ever had. It's got an Aetheros chipset on it, 
that's been absolutely outstanding. <clears throat> Below that is the power supply, which is, curiously enough, an FSP group power supply that uh, seems to work quite well. Uh, funny story about that power supply, actually. Uh, when I bought this back from Sean, he sent it to me, and I guess in shipping, it fucked up the bearing in the fan. The fan that was in that power supply had a plastic bearing. It was trash. And when I plugged it in, it went... <laughs> as you would expect a plastic bearing to do once it's broken. So I opened up that power supply, probably voiding the warranty, but I know how to fix power supplies, so it's not going to matter. Um, I went in there and discovered that the fan was soldered to the board. So what I did, I kind of took a shortcut. <laughs> I took... Um, wires and uh, I, I uh, cut the wires to that fan, just took the fan out entirely. Uh, took a Cooler Master fan that was in another case, just an old Cooler Master fan that was older, that was like six years old, and the fan was still beautiful. I took that, I stuck it in into the power supply and then spliced the wires in and voila, it works. You don't hear any grinding on a fan, do you? <laughs> Worked quite well. Kind of a redneck hack job of a uh, uh, power supply fan replacement, but it did work very well. And that is the uh, back of the machine. This thing also has little stands, which are quite nice. I like the stands because I can just stand it vertically like that without it, fear of it tipping. In the front here, it has an extremely bright blue LED, which is kind of annoying, in my opinion. I mean, I wish I hadn't done that, but whatever. What uh, Sean did is I think he put a piece of tape over it. And what I had, when it was a server, I had a piece of electrical tape over the uh, front there. But now I decided to take that off because it gets in the way of opening up the DVD drive. Which is a random SATA light-on drive. Light-on is not my favorite, but it does work. Well, that is a Cowtech card reader. Which can do uh, XC, SD, micro SD, memory stick, memory stick duo, and CF cards. CF cards being the primary reason I got this because my cam, my uh, still, my uh, still camera still uses uh, CF cards, and it's nice to have a card reader that can just deal with it, and then I can feed it into the operating system and just do whatever the hell I want with it. It's got two USB ports, one occupied by a Lexar flash drive. It's got front panel audio. The front panel audio tends to get a lot of noise in it from the hard drive, however. Uh, for some reason. I guess that's just bad shielding. Or bad grounding or what have you. But either way. So what I've put in this machine is uh, what I call stairs RAM. Because one of the RAM sticks is low profile and one of them isn't. There's a, there's a low profile 2 gigabyte Kingston stick and a 1 gigabyte full height um, Kingston stick in there. So it's, there's 3 gigabytes of RAM in there. Two different, two completely different uh, cache latencies though. So the board kind of has to accommodate for that and make the RAM slightly slower, but honestly, it's a net top. That's, the RAM is not the bottleneck here. <clears throat> so uh, the, real, the real bottleneck of the system is the graphics more than anything else. <clears throat> it has, speaking of which, the, uh, this Atom board has uh, GMA3150 graphics, which perform a hell of a lot better than the GMA950 that was on the old uh, Atom330 board. Now, GMI 950s are pretty damn good. They're very versatile. They they uh, get along well with many different operating systems. This GMA 3150 does not, which is kind of annoying, which is leaving me with uh, Windows and uh, only certain versions of Linux that actually pick up and use the card properly, that version of Linux being Ubuntu 10.10 .10 that works properly with the particular card. So, there you go. There is a 1 terabyte Western Digital Caviar Black in this uh, computer. There was a Caviar Green in here at one point, but uh, that drive is a little... I. It's a good drive, but... Eh, that drive makes a better, sto better like portable storage drive because it, it generates less heat. So I decided to put it in this Nexstar case, and this is where that Caviar Green is now, and I use it as my portable hard drive. So I decided to put the Caviar Black in here and u use it and take advantage of its performance. Now, as you can see, I'm running Windows 7 on this computer at the minute, which uh, performs quite well. You can even see that Arrow is working. It takes a while to open the uh, 
Windows thing there, I guess. This is a pretty fresh install Windows 7, by the way, too. So it's Windows 7, Service Pack 1. There you have it. It's an Atom D510 at clocked at 1.66 uh, gigahertz. Uh, 3 gigabytes of RAM, 32-bit Windows. I must stress on these net tops, use, if you're going to install Windows on these, use 32-bit Windows because 64-bit does not run well at all on these Atom, on some of these Atom processors. Uh, the, this particular board just does, just runs 32-bit a lot faster than 64-bit. Probably because of the 32-bit emulation that's on top of 64-bit uh, Windows. So, run 32-bit Windows on these. I always do. Uh, as far as Linux, as far as Linux goes, and other uh, Unix-based operating systems, or Unix-like, anyway, 64-bit uh, runs a lot faster. So it's kind of a, a it's polar opposite, <laughs> kind of. So there you go. It's got a GMA 3150 in it. As it focuses, there we go. There you go, it has a uh, light on iHaz 324. iHaz and iHaz. <laughs> Human interface devices. Hmm, the Matrix. So this is an ICH7 based board, as you can see right there, because it's got an ICH7 um, serial ATA controller. And ICH7 is a very stable chipset, and I'm very thankful to have that on this board. Standard PS2 keyboard. This is not a standard keyboard, this is an awesome keyboard underappreciating bastard. <laughs> okay, I was wrong about the D-Link. It was a WDA 1320 uh, desktop adapter. And these that's an excellent wireless G card if you ever uh, want to use one. I definitely recommend that one above all other G cards. It's the best one I've ever had. And D-Link is not the one to uh, attribute to that. It's because of the chipset they used on it. It's because it's using an Aethros chipset. And the Aethros chipset on that card is rock fucking solid. I love it. Definitely recommend those cards if you can find them. Because they also include, they also have uh, provisions for low profile brackets, which I am using in this machine since it takes low, one low profile PCI slot. What else is in here? There you go. It's actually dual core hyper threaded as well. So it's, it sounds like it's super powerful, but that just helps the processor deal with a lot of stuff at once. USB audio device. That would be this uh, Logitech stick mic here. System devices. There's a lot of ICH7 stuff, ACPI, uh, UM bus, PCI bus, etc., etc. ICH7 on USB. So there you have it. That's the. Uh, it runs Windows 7 very, very well, actually. Although, curiously, I did run Vista on this for a while, as you probably saw in, in the video about this particular NEC monitor a while back, or not a while back, but you know. Um, and Vista actually, it, the Vista, Vista's video drivers actually ran a lot better on this net top, and the same was the case with the three, the Atom 330. But they didn't perform better enough for the one program I wanted to run to run, which was uh, Second Life Viewer. And uh, Linux runs that a lot better, so I'm going to end up installing Linux on here, as well as Windows, to have a dual boot setup like I have on most of my machines. Apart from this netbook here, which has only uh, Linux on it because it has a 20 gig hard drive in it. But uh, that's why there is a USB stick in that port. So, what we're going to do is just restart the thing. You can do it. You can do it, buddy. So what I'm going to do is hit whatever the boot button is. I think that's escape on these boards. Yep, boot selection's escape. So make sure to hit that button. And there you go. We're going to start from the Lexar, which is right there. I just pressed enter. There you go, Ubuntu. You can run Ubuntu from the USB or install the hard disk. I'm going to run it so that I can put Wi-Fi stuff in. 
but for some reason Ubuntu 10.10 is the only version of Linux that I've gotten to work moderately well on here without any issues other than GNOME being the bastard that it is sometimes. It's GNOME 2.32. So, you know. This is very blue on the screen and I don't know why. It is not that blue in real life, it's purple. As you can see when I zoom it in, but when I move it away... This iPod is very weird with its camera. That's what I'm using to uh, shoot these 720p videos, actually. So, yeah. I've and So, basically, this net top has been integrated into my whole setup here. Its onboard audio is good enough for me to use on my main receiver, which is this Marantz 2220B. I love this guy. Um, but, yeah, the only thing I really need to do is just get somehow get Linux to cooperate with me on this computer so that I can run a, a Second Life viewer at one point or another. So what I'm going to do is just uh, divide the disk in half first, restart the computer, restart the uh, disk again, and get Linux on here. And I guess uh, you guys have, I'm sure you guys have seen what a Linux install looks like on a computer. So I'm not really going to show that. I don't think, but overall, I like this net top. It's a very, very capable machine, even though they kind of, they appear as though they couldn't run a thing, but they're not via processors. They can actually do quite a bit for what they are. So, yeah, that's kind of been uh, my experience with this net top. They're very capable machines. I'd say they make much better servers than desktops, but if you're the kind of person who uses your desktop for only the, only like a web browser, and well, basically nothing graphically intensive. Let's say you have, let's say you put, let's say you watch videos, you put movies on, you put, uh, I don't know, media onto an iPod or you use iTunes or something, browse the internet, uh, deal with photos with a scanner or a printer or something. Basically nothing that's, that's going to use 3D graphics will do, will be great, are great on these machines. So if you just want an extra machine around that doesn't use much power that you can just use as a, uh, an everyday just like, lol, I need to check my email sort of machine. Uh, these are perfect for that. And they're even better as servers because they're so low powered. So that's, so that's, especially for file servers and things like TeamSpeak servers, Minecraft servers, Urban Terror servers. For things like um, Counter-Strike and TF2, so you probably want a system that's a little, has a little bit of a faster number cruncher as far as a processor goes, like maybe a Pentium Dual Core or a Core 2 Dual, or even just like, a Pentium 4 HT as a server, but I would not use a Pentium 4 as a server, that's a power hog. Um, yeah, these are very capable machines for uh, tasks like that. These machines actually make great workbench computers, because if you just need to look something up real quick, or need to have a schematic open while you're working on something, or uh, need to watch a quick YouTube video to figure out how to do something, these are perfect for that, because they don't they don't eat up much power, they're they're very inexpensive and they're just very very awesome machines. I mean, they're I mean, don't they're nothing to worship, but they they really fill a gap in the market that was that was uh there for a long time. And I really like that. Considering these days saving power is very important because the uh since they're deregulating, you know how pe people just think deregulation is such a good idea since they deregulated all the power companies and shit like that, uh, the rates have skyrocketed, and our power bill was about $1,000 last month, which was absolutely insane. And, uh, of course, with my dad on retirement, we can't keep paying that over and over again, so I have to use as little power as possible on, with halogen lights on a step-up transformer, and half the other crap running in the house, including a, a pump, the pump for the pond outside, it's, it, power gets expensive. I mean, it really does. So, these machines are, are really good for that. I mean, there you have it. I think I've said all that needs to be said about these for now, and uh, I just hope you enjoyed learning learn a little bit more about these and uh, me rambling on about this thing, and uh, yeah. So, have a good one, everybody. Ciao.